I am going to press the go hey. go live button. Hey. Okay. I'm pressing right, go we're totally live. Ready. We're totally ready. And we're going live. And people can tell okay. me. Okay. Hello. We're here. We're here. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hello. Welcome, Rosalind, our esteemed guest. It's so nice to have you here. And Shannon and, and Ike, Zan, Kathy and 81 Tizzle in the YouTube chat. Thank you so much for being here. Um, hi, Maya. It's um, episode 25 of the Drawn Together show. Um, and as I was going through Rosalind's Instagram account today, which you can follow, the link is in the description below, um, to, to get inspired and see a lot of beauty. Um, I saw that a reminder that Rosalind was at our first ever Drawn Together episode. That's so cool. Yeah. And now we're here hanging out together. Oh, this is so fun. So nice. It's <laughs> it's wonderful having you here. Um, and I'm going to bring up the reference already. So you see there's a hand on the screen because hands are portraits too. Um, yes. <laughs> and if you would like, if some of my friends love drawing hands, <laughs> so you can screenshot this or you can follow the link in the description to get access to the files. And there's a little... Um, in the the non hand photo there's a little easter egg of excitement over here but I'll, I'll i'll just cover that up again um and so these are the images we'll be working from and if you're afraid of hands then i encourage you to draw the hand but if you don't want to you can just jump straight into the portrait and we'll be starting with like a, a warm-up sketch of the hand for about 20 minutes hi alex hi gabriella um yeah and I'm just going to start bringing up some of your work, which you won't be able to see because you're not on YouTube. Um, right. But I will just chat about kind of what I've been looking at and you can kind of tell us some of some of the things that we all want to oh. know. And if anyone who's watching has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And if you just want to talk about what you've been drawing recently, you can put that in the chat as well. And um, we're so happy to have you here. And you're in for a treat because um, I have a lot of really amazing work of Rosalind's to look at. Um, so here we go. I'm going to start with some of these um, landscapes and travel sketches that you've been working on. And um, yeah, I'm sure we'll have a chance to, to talk a lot about your traveling, which um, since I've known you, you have been traveling a lot. and. It's so, so wonderful seeing the way it inspires and informs your work. And wow. yeah, some really beautiful, beautiful pieces. And you were at the quarantine event recently, right? And there was, I, yeah. yeah I, in fact, if anybody um, has ever thought about it, I mean, you, you can ask me anything, I'll be totally honest. So it's a, it's a really, um, really interesting concept and an amazing experience i mean i'd recommend it first of all i'd, I'd recommend it but yeah if you've ever um looked at it wondered about it i'll tell you all the inside secrets cool. i won't i won't get anything back <laughs> cool cool yeah we'll definitely that's what i want to know because you you weren't allowed to use your phone no. there right yeah. you, you weren't allowed to get on the, cool. on the internet while you're there it's Right? Yeah, it's very strict, and they're they're very serious about that. And um, um, it is like I mean, they're not out there policing like your children, but it's you're you know on your honor, you're asked to to be offline. And so, yeah, I I did that. <laughs> cool. And we've we've moved now. I think those um, landscapes perhaps um, were uh, kind of inspired a bit from the uh, quarantine experience. And now I've started moving into some master studies because you've done all of these beautiful master studies and oh, they're just they're so, so lush and, and loose and um, super inspiring. And oh, wow. yeah, and it's just it's just been incredible. And I've I've done a few master studies years ago, <laughs> um, but I've just been amazed by your your master study output and it has been oh. so inspiring and yeah just such incredible work that you're doing and i must I imagine you must be learning so much from it and it's um I feel, 
I think I approach it just a little different because there are people that are amazing at master studies and I, I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't put myself in their, the same category because they are so detailed mm -hmm. and, and months and months. Um, I will, I will, I know there's something that these artists all can teach us and I do, um, I kind of feel like I'm doing it in my shorthand version, but I always feel like I'm learning something um, that I'm supposed to from them. Yeah. But, um, but I always feel a little embarrassed calling them master studies, but they are the masters and I am studying them. So I, but the, you know what I mean? Yeah. When someone's doing a master study and you're like, I can't tell the difference between yeah, yeah. the actual work and the, and the artist. And I, I've, I've never quite done that, but, um, but I've wanted to do their work enough that it informed me what I felt like I needed to know mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, I'm probably yeah not totally. And I, I remember when I was first seeing them and then I started recognizing some of the pieces and I was like, wait a minute. What? And, um, <laughs> Because, you know, I don't always read the comments and I was like, oh, wow, these are master studies. And I, I love the looseness of them. And and it's just been really cool. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, the, it's the the brevity of these studies, I think, is really wonderful because yeah. uh, because cumulatively you've done so many of them. Um, yeah. And if you were if you're doing like exact replicas, you probably wouldn't get as many done. <laughs> so, um, okay. yeah, and I, there's no. <laughs> And now, um, and this is really interesting. Now I'm shifting over, just looking at some of your personal work. And I think it's amazing because when I looked at those, I was like, wait a minute, are these master studies or is this your work? Um, and, <laughs> and there's this wonderful kind of um, flow between them, I think. Like there's this one of uh, Rosie on a carousel. Yes. And, yes. and it, it kind of it has this period look about it with this like um, ornate carousel and it looks like it could be one of these master studies and I was like oh wow this is actually like personal work but it's can really see the connection and how um, they like inform each other which is super cool thank you yeah. that means a lot to me yeah. it's actually what I hope to hear so you're gosh yeah. I appreciate that you it's like you're in my brain a little awesome. bit awesome <laughs> well th that's great we're, we're already winning <laughs> And uh, this this is um, the piece that Rosalind did from our first ever Drawn Together episode where you popped in and for 30 minutes did this piece of Tori. Um, so that was nice to, to add that to the mix here as well. And um, and I'm not sure who this is, but the one about the reading the Mistborn book. And there's this beautiful pigeon and um, middle child, a family sketch here, and then some chickens to to end <laughs> to end the personal work on and then we'll get into our sketching and conversation and um oh, yeah just such a, a beautiful selection of work I've, I've really enjoyed um that's my mom and my sibling oh wow uh, cool with the, it's it's like from the 70s and i like looking at the outfits i mean i i left it kind of vague that one family where it's my mother was kind of like aren't you going to finish that and I'm like it's done yeah 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 <laughs> I like not wanting to over over um I just the ultra you know um hyper realism I guess it's yeah. not the end goal for me but I do love when it's fun to just work on something until you feel like oh I really got it but I like the vagueness where it kind of could be any family mm -hmm. any family members getting dressed up in their you know bell bottoms and plaid pants and 70s outfit yeah. and the beehives and yeah yeah it's 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 excellent and i i think that's something that i've really enjoyed about your work that they um i, I do a lot of quick sketches and that has become like a core thing in the the past three years of my practice and um and then to see you doing something that i don't know how long it takes you but it, it has that loose quality about it and it, um and i yeah. since i it's ready to go stay yeah yeah it's a setting in a setting so like in a day cool um i'm going to start drawing your hand now so anyone who wants to draw along with this um hand piece feel free or if you want to go um straight to the portrait then you'll find that at the link in the description 
Um, and we will continue to chat as we draw your hand. And um, and it, it was so cool when you sent this through and said hands are portraits too. And you were a, a fiddler, right? I yes, yes. Yeah. I well, I am classically trained, but I lived in Missouri, and you can't get out of that state without fiddling. So cool. there are some um, recordings out there of me fiddling, which is the funniest thing of all things. But um, I had I was contacted by Farm Bureau State Insurance, and they're like, we want a commercial at the, we raised our family in Idaho and they said, we need this commercial done and it needs to be somebody that uses Farm Bureau that um, has a connection to like Weezer, uh, Weezer Idaho is the national competition for fiddlers and um, they wanted somebody that had a connection to the national competition that could fiddle and talk about insurance. And I, at the time I was playing, playing in a symphony and I don't know how they got my name it was really bizarre and um, and I, I said well I have a student that went and competed at Weezer and they said close enough that's a close enough connection <laughs> yeah. come, in, come in and do this commercial and fiddle and talk about Farm Bureau I'm like oh my gosh well I guess <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was like this little thing and I swear it's 20 years later and occasionally somebody will come up I just heard you on the radio or something like that. It's like a commercial that I'm like, they have got their money's worth out of that commercial. <laughs> cool. It's no, it's a, it's a radio spot. I just had to go into a sound studio and the guy, um, I'm not that loud of a person. And he kept trying to tell me to talk louder. And so I try. And by the end of the recording, I, I felt like I was screaming. I use farm, you know, state farm. Our insurance. I'm like, he's gonna listen to this, but the guy and he kind of did the sound and everything. But I felt like I was yelling at him the whole time. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Is... I don't think I'd be a good radio host. <laughs> Who insures you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Currently, <laughs> not for Farm Bureau. <laughs> <laughs> Is is there anywhere else we can listen to your fiddling? You know, no, that's probably, that's that's probably it. at this. Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> um, it's to me, I always felt like uh, it was a parlor trick. Like it was something I learned to do when I was eight years old. I only know a certain amount of <laughs> fiddle songs <laughs> that I know from my childhood. And so nobody really wants to hear, um, you know, your your 10 page Bach piece or Vivaldi or anything like that they'll but they might they might go oh that's really pretty for a few minutes but then you pull out a couple minutes of fiddling they're like wow she is really yeah. good <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so it is it is a fun thing to do nice um my yeah, there's just actually one of my most uh like um you know we're always insecure about something and I've got these really long fingers and I took that picture because of like I just wanted to have have a memory of this day I was feeling like ultra insecure and I was like I really don't like my hands but then I thought no they're my hands they're me and so I was like that's every year I try to do a self portrait mm -hmm. and that was my self portrait for the year that year cool so. Yeah. yeah, and um, your hands are, are so important and, and useful. And um, yes, and being a, a painter and a fiddler. Um, that's just a couple of the uses. Yeah. How did you get that? Scar? I have lots of scars on my hand. Um, the one I'm trying to think of that. OK, so on the top, um, that was me camping and a little twig had just popped on the top of my hand while I was on a hike and it always stayed there so I should always always remember that camping experience <laughs> there with me forever <laughs> now, do you guys like camping very much because that was that's a chore for me yeah, yeah camping's cool I yeah that's 
van, van life camping being outside it's it's, it's good yeah <laughs> you're go, you're going to be doing the ultimate adventure in your van when you get started what percentage do you see that you'll be enjoying the van life compared to oh like right now yeah like if you're like out of a year i'd love to be in my van like six months or something like what do you see in the future for that that is an excellent question. Um, let me it's a tough that. one. Especially traveling. I think, yeah, I found a, I get it. I found a map where you can travel, and I was just telling um, Zan or the drawing, I was just mentioning this, but there's a map where you can follow the constant temperature of like 73 to 75 degrees or something it's like 70 to like a nice comfy temperature range that you can travel yeah. through during the year and that looked enticing i think the more i get used to it probably the longer i don't know have you ever have you ever done that have you ever gone in a in a camp you know or, or, or did you tent camp? probably the most i mean we would always take our kids once a year camping, but not, we've, my husband and I, we've not done anything like where, where, where we've been in a camper or, or camping like that. Um, but I don't know, those sprinter vans and everything, I, I certainly look them over when I go by them. I mean, when they're driving by and you kind of go, oh, that's smart. And some of them are really, really convenient. It's a good way to, I think it's a good way to plan, especially the good weather. You know, traveling good weather, that's that's a smart thing, so. It's like a big room. It's not like, like mine is super minimalist for reasons, like partly because I don't know how to make it more maximalist, mm -hmm. but like, um, it's really, really simple. So it's like a room with a bed. So if you can live in a room with a bed and a desk. That's all you need. It's the same. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's very plain. Yeah, that's all you need. Eventually, yeah. getting down to the point where you're like, um, um, I mean, it'd be nice to have you know, lots of everything at your fingertips. But when you're traveling, it really comes down to what do you really need? And that can be a pretty small list eventually. Mm. Uh, we, we just have a, a backpack. That's all we do is just one single backpack. And so we never check luggage or anything. Cool. When you, um, but you, where you stay, like, cause you're traveling quite often, right? Like, do you have a home? So base? we don't, we don't have a permanent home or residence. We travel full time and nice. it's, um, Airbnb is a great resource. And, um, sometimes just, you know, you can, uh, short term lease if you want to stay someplace a little longer. I mean, like this, like. Yeah you know, KSL or, you know, just, just ads and things. But for the most part, I'd say 90% it's all Airbnb. And so I wish Airbnb did like fire miles, like, yeah. <laughs> like, <the airlines. laughs> cause the yeah, airlines give you points, but no, not Airbnb. But, to be um, like you've stayed at so many places, you get the next, uh, I know. Place. Or, or you get invited to one of, to one of those really cool ones. Have you stayed like in yeah. a medieval tower or a church or anything like that? that? Yeah, an upgrade. They should definitely upgrade if you've like, oh, so many times now you get to pick this, like, you know, this tier. That'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, they, they, could, they could gamify Airbnb and, um, and mm -hmm. you'd get all these like level up. Um, no, seriously, I think that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> we should call them Dylan. Should, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's, sell your idea. A <laughs> gamify would be smart, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like they're doing good enough business. I guess they're like, yeah, whatever. But I've often been like, come on, there should be a reward system. Yeah. Um, I used to um, when I was traveling around. I I couch surfed a lot, and I don't know if couch surf is even a thing anymore because like Airbnb has become so easy. Um, and I guess we're yeah. we're in a different stage of our life where it's like. You know, it's 
um, I, I used to thrive on the the social contact and just crashing on someone's couch and stuff. And now it's kind of like with kids, it's like, okay, it's good just to be able to have your own space, be able to shut the door. <laughs> um, so it's I guess it's a different phase of life. Um, but yeah, I, I, really I, I feel like um, people who perhaps may have offered their spare bedroom on couch surfing probably now cashing in on Airbnb. So yeah, I wonder things have changed, I guess. But um, back to the camping. I, I like camping. I, I slept in, um, in the forest with my nine year old and some friends a couple of weeks ago. And um, oh, fun. yeah, that was really cool. You know what? Kids think it's the very best. I mean, we we made sure I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of camping. But I have I am good for a few days, so my limits like three or four days, mm -hmm. I, and that sounds really crazy coming from. I mean, I guess I live out of a backpack. I don't know. I can't really complain about camping. I kind of I feel like I do it full time, but <laughs> but like but I guess where I'm in a tent and like there's like you know the possibility of a bear. That's what I think of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tents are very thin. Um, yeah, tent. a thin barrier between it, it, you and the bear. Yeah. Yeah, campfire, yeah. like s'mores and stuff. <laughs> in um, at quarantine, one of the nights we ended the night. There was a bonfire, and they had marshmallows. And I was like, "Oh, this is really sweet. Feels like, you know, feels like home having a little, little toasted marshmallow." And so many people had um, never had a a marshmallow over a campfire oh, wow. before, mm -hmm. and I was like, "What?" <laughs> I, I'm I'm going and toasting everyone's marshmallows for them. I'm like, you gotta try this. <laughs> so, cool. For a lot of people, there were a lot of different countries there. Um, I definitely don't think. I think um, the Americans. We were probably in a minority. I feel like we were, but um, everyone, you know, spoke English. It was wonderful. And part of the best part was getting to. Just like our community here online, we're, we're all over the world. It was kind of a physically, you know, getting to see your friends in the art community um, yeah. in person. Because yeah. you, um, so you're it. part of, of yeah. the, the Our Painted Lives family. Um, you, yes. you hang out and post stuff from there a lot. And I guess with uh, Nicolas Oribe being there, there must have been a few, um, a, uh, a few members of the family so there. So, yeah. Ta you know, there were... I definitely was, it was fun because uh, it would be like, you're real, people coming up saying, you're real, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and really getting a hug and, and really getting to, um, yes, just give people a hug in person versus just sending a heart emoji over yeah. online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's so nice. <laughs> it's great, but it was nice in person, yeah. Cool. And you got to go to the exhibit and wow. see I don't know how many friends in person. Yeah, that, that was really Dylan. cool. I think there were um, there were like twenty five of us there from from the Kenya yeah. group. So yeah, that was that was amazing. It was really cool. Um, I just love that. Yeah, Nicole, um, you know, with the beautiful red yeah. hair, Nicole, she is um, amazing and an amazing artist. Yeah. She was um, in my my group um, with Nicholas. Oh, so cool. Nicholas part, and then every day we were outside landscape painting, and um, that's what we did the whole time. And she was she was so talented. I got partnered with her one time, and I was just like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, you get me as a partner." But she <laughs> blew it out a lot. She, she was amazing, and just yeah, you just really learn to love everybody. They're yeah. just amazing people. So nice. Yeah, I am. Um, I had been. Uh, two times to the illustration masterclass when I first decided like when I was 28 and was like oh I actually want to draw more than anything um, and then I went to this and it was that was a week long and um, in Amherst in in the States and there were a uh, hundred wow. participants and 15 teachers and um, and that was that was incredible and I didn't know anyone before I went there um, and we just spent that Sounds kind of similar. Yeah. I mean, really intense. Did you feel like you were just thrown into the deep yeah. end? And yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I really, I had had no like art training since high school. Um, and then I was there with like professionals or people who just got out of art school, and it was like, 
wow, what's going on here? And it was just um, not nonstop. And that was kind of like a, being thrown into art education for me. It was really cool. Um, Mike asked, do, do you camp to refill your creative bucket or escape from work slash art? Um, that could be a camp slash travel, perhaps. That, um, yeah. Could be an open question. Um, you know, uh, it's interesting. That's a good question um, because I will crave a studio sometimes. Like I've had, I've had a, a studio where everything's at my fingertips and it feels so convenient. And um, normally, I mean, besides quarantine, where I packed some specific things to take with me, um, normally I have an art kit that's very small. In fact. I can show it to you. This is Nora. Yeah, I'll, I'll, cool. Yeah, I'll show you. I'm going to is move on to the portrait now. It's about the Ooh. size of what I carry Ooh, with cute. me. And then I'll have, yeah, and it's usually packed. Like right now it's pretty empty. It's it's kind of packed. How and large then is I'll your have, sketchbook there? So the sketchbook, and I have one right here too, um, will be, so you can see it's like nine by 12 so it's a pretty big big um sketchbook i think it's nine. Is it so this one is you know what it, this one's a pentallic and i'm i'm pretty um weird about this i'll tell you why but i also carry a um moleskin like this size so you see i have like these two sizes always with me and um a lot of times museums and everything, this is the size I would carry in, all right? And then going back to my Airbnb or my makeshift table making art, I would work in, in something bigger. And so those, those are typically, um, and then this. So that's like quite a bit of, of room I have to like kind of sacrifice in my backpack. And then, um, and, that's, and that's it. And then, little things like picking up paints um i can pick up paints where i'm at sometimes and then this sounds horrible but i'll dump them where i'm at so i'll use them and and not not trash but I'll, yeah but i'll ask people would you like them or if nobody ever wants to take them then yeah sometimes they go in the trash um but i really do try to find and sometimes i've left it with a note <laughs> <laughs> saying, you know, I hope you like to paint. And so I, I've done that, but yeah, I, I, would like <laughs> that. That would be great. I I do try to give it away. Um, and I, and so if I'm packing my own in there, um, little things, sometimes little gouache, sometimes little oils, sometimes, you know, acrylics are the ones that, you know, can get bought and dumped all, dumped all the time. But, um, and they are like my favorite to work in because they dry so quickly. So, um, I mean, not my, like, it's not like, oh, I have to have them, but whatever, whatever I can make work is what I make work. So I guess that's kind of the rule is I just have to make it work. And that's great. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> like I said, sometimes I miss a studio. <laughs> but Have you, but have yeah. you had a studio in the past? I have. Yeah. But it, it's, it's, um, Currently, so I I have a commercial building that I taught a lot of um, music students and um, I did I, I did have art classes and art students, but it was majority music students: violin, viola, uh, guitar, banjo, piano. I just saw a lot of students, and then um, I did about 15 seasons with the symphony, and then by the time that we knew, like our oldest child was graduating and everything I just kept my my commercial building my studio and um, and we put just some uh, important papers that we needed and and my, so my studio is kind of packed up but uh, my house when we sold it we I, I sold and this was not a quick thing like when people talk about downsizing and I don't know there's anyone this might be the most boring thing for people out there like oh selling stuff and downsizing we sold like our we sold our couch like linens um 
I sold every stitch of, I mean, everything. Like if it was a towel, if it was furniture, I didn't keep anything. The only thing I am, we put in boxes were like important papers, like, you know, marriage certificates, things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, some jewelry, you know, things that had meaning, things that were important to keep for whatever reason. But as far as things go, we sold everything. And um, So it was just like once the, how many kids do you have? We have three children, and they're all grown, mm -hmm. and, and all uh, two are married with children. Last one's in college, finishing up his his career. You know, getting started on it, just you know, working hard at the college level. Yeah. And, and so when we come and check in on everybody every few months, we see everyone, check in, we all get to hang out, and then um, we go from there and decide where to go. Cool. But, year before covid when we started doing this oh, and so okay. it's been it's been yeah and so when when the um uh, julie just said it's not boring at all so you can talk about how how to sell <laughs> bedding and stuff um, <laughs> um I literally ask and beg and borrow do you need this, sheet <laughs> this sheet? here's a bed do you want the bed so it's, there'll be people that need to take it so so once you're that's my whole like Facebook feed. That's like my whole social media presence. Like, who wants this book? Who wants this? Please buy this. <laughs> buy this thing. It's seriously. And you know, it, this is the thing. It actually, um, this is what I would find interesting. It didn't, you don't do it like on a whim. It took me six years. Like I, I had made the plan and then I just didn't do it crazy. Like, you know, for all hours of the day. I mean, I had a plan and I worked the plan. So you know, take this three months and work on, you know, getting rid of all this furniture, whatever, you know, like the living room furniture. I, I took it in step. And so by, by the time the kids were all gone and we were at that last, like, you know, he left for college and here it's just my husband and I looking at each other. It's like, what do we do now? It literally, we had an empty house. It was completely empty and we put it on the market and it sold in one wow. day. <laughs> That's wild. You know, empty houses. So how did you navigate the... Yeah, wouldn't they sell fast? Like I see houses on real estate listings and they all have everybody's stuff in it. They're all staged, but you can't imagine like, yes. how your stuff would look in it because it's too busy right. looking like somebody else's house. I would highly recommend recommend a, a staged home, first of all, if you, if you can't manage, you know, almost empty. I had a, it was completely empty except for a, like a, a chair and a little table. Like I left a couple little odd things that like somebody, when they came in, I said, you can have those things or I can take them to the dump. You know, it doesn't matter to me. And it was funny. They, they wanted everything. I mean, we're talking like a little side table with some flowers. I mean, like it was states like that, but it was completely empty. And um, so the little bench and the little this and that, they were like, oh, please leave it. And so I just left whatever they, how they saw it. And so. I have a question that I'm burning to ask, like it's just burning in my <laughs> questioner. Um, okay. How did you, what, how did you, and Julie has an awesome question too. Um, how did you, how did that conversation go? Like when you looked at your husband and you both decided <laughs> to be nomads together like did you agree did you disagree is there conflict on the road so, do you like how do you yeah like how does that go um you know there's i'd, I'd have to say um um you have to be like-minded you're gonna need a partner that's on the same page that has this goal like obviously taking you know the six years prior to that event, me saying, I am refusing to buy another gadget to go in my kitchen. I will not buy another chair to sit in this house. I wouldn't add to what I knew I had to get rid of. And over the six years, everyone, including my children, knew like that was a plan that we were all working to, towards as a team. So it wasn't a me effort. It was everybody knew like, no, that's not that fun. I, I'd like to go shopping at some point, you know, go with family members or whatever. It'd be fun too. But eventually I had to be like, something had to be really outstanding for me to even make a purchase after a while because I knew I had to get rid of it. 
So that's a mind shift, I guess. I mean, like, there's that minimal podcast. I never got into it, but there is people that can get into it. But have helpful tools, things like that. But I just lived it for so long that um, I just realized it had to be done that way. And then at the end, my husband, so the whole time I kept saying, hey, that garage, I'm, I'm leaving that for you to deal with. Like everything else in the house, like I got a plan. But I swear that man did that garage in probably two months. <laughs> <laughs> he had this, he had this garage to deal with and he, you know, bless his heart. He got he got it done because I doubted him. I did doubt him, but he <laughs> he got it done. But he, you know, if anything, we kind of have veto power. If there's something one person's like, I'm against this. This is, like, and I'll give you an example. He wanted to go live on a boat. Okay, um, that that's was was something he was like. I am really excited about this. Let's go live on a boat. And I'm like, that that's sounds crazy. like hell. <laughs> And so my response, like if we're making a pro and con list, my, my is hell on earth boat. And he's like, that's the best thing in the world. Um, so we had to compromise on that. <laughs> so, um, but like he could go stay on a boat. He could go have a boat. I did suggest, I, I did suggest, I'm like, you could send me a postcard if you want it. That's yeah. not fun. <laughs> He didn't think that was funny either. He was like, yeah, we have to do it together. I'm like, well, you could send me a postcard and tell me what you think of the boat. Um, but yeah, you have to, everything's a decision. And I think it's a lot of planning. It's a lot of work. And nine out of 10 people we run into it. I think initially they go, oh, that sounds really neat. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty, it's a very odd person that's gonna actually be like, oh yeah, like let me, just live out of a backpack because it's 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 different it's it's um it's rewarding there's a lot of rewarding things as far as like experiences and the exp i would put it this like like experience over i don't know I, I we value those experiences way way over i guess a couch not to say that a couch is you know couches are great i love couches but we right now at this stage in our life we're willing to trade some things and that's the trade and the bottom line is um we're not guaranteed tomorrow that was really our in the goal setting phase that we were like if we keep saying we'll do it later it's never going to happen or what if later happens and we're really old and and, and it's uh, not enjoyable because there's health problems or or something like that we were really worried like we'd never get to it or there's never a perfect time when we say, oh, there's going to be a, a time. There's never a perfect time because there's always something, always something that will convince you otherwise. So we had to, we had to work the plan and then we had to be realistic and then, um, you know, make decisions together, which are not always easy. Case in point, boats are hell on earth. So. <laughs> Kira and I have actually um, we've we've wondered about traveling by boat and um, I had until I met Kira I was like just drifting around traveling um, I came to Europe in 2004 and met Kira 2007 and then by the end of 2007 we were on a boat for half a year together and awesome. yeah um, awesome. but they were also um, 26 17 year olds on that boat um yeah and and we yeah. survived that so that was like well if we can yeah that, that was it was rough um but like but if we can do that then um we, we could probably do it and i i look for that where you kind of like co co um i don't know how to explain it you kind of work on a boat with other people and you mm -hmm. kind of share it i looked into that and i i i, I did try to do compromising i think that's the way to do it but though, Dylan, I think you made a good choice with that mm. one. So that's an adventure. Yeah. And you did survive. Yeah, yeah. It was an adventure and it was a half a year adventure. Um, that's so it, and then it was done. So something like that. I don't know. Maybe that would be you could find a project like that together if you're up for it for half yeah. a year. That, I think that is a, a way to do it. Like there are options. Yeah. You know, there are ways if you're willing to. There are ways to do yeah. it. But um, and you know, if you're traveling like your six month 
thing like that. Like, so I bet there are days that weren't easy. I think it's interesting when you do something like that with another person, you typically have to be, you have to really be a team. And if anything, it makes you um, work harder as a mm -hmm. team. Like you, I mean, if you're in another country and I mean, that's your stuff to have a need, that's that person. If you, I mean, sometimes even want to have a conversation, that might be the only person you can have a conversation with. So it's not to be, um, yeah, it's it, you got to pick that person pretty carefully if you want to be kind of stuck. Yeah. <laughs> stuck yeah. with the person. So. Yeah. And um well, cool. I like the 6 month on the boat thing. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was the English teacher and I I actually got Kira's job. And um and Yeah, and I what did I do? I um I listened to Tool and System of a Down and like dissected the, <laughs> the lyrics with the kids. So what is what what do you understand from that? And you know, what does it mean? And we'd talk about um, lyrics and people would bring their own favorite songs and we'd talk about them. And um we watched the Matrix together. <laughs> and uh so I and that that was curious thing, like you, you just um whatever you really like, do that with the kids and then they'll learn through that because I had no training as as a teacher really. Um Yeah. So and kids cool. know that. Kids know if you like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um Julie has a couple questions. Um, yes. Is being an artist on the go more or less difficult than sedentary or not on the go? That's a good question. Is it, you say Julie? Thank, Julie, that's a good question. I have, um, I have flip-flopped on that a couple times because, uh, you know, sometimes when you're feeling kind of, I don't know, moody, I, you know, or, or you always think the grass is always greener and then sure enough I'll have a solution like I'll figure out a solution and then I'll think you know it's really doable there has been times that I'm I I have not missed a day like this last leg I'd say the last leg was um, uh, mostly in Spain and I didn't I didn't miss a single day of, of not I mean painting like eight hours I would paint probably eight hours a day Wow. if not more like I like and I'm not exaggerating. I probably did more. Um, and I didn't miss a day at all. And so I come home and I'm like, oh, I was really productive on that week. And then um, sometimes where I'm at, it's a struggle. And But I won't miss a day. I, w I won't not create. But sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, I wish I was, I wish I had more um, convenience of things that I want. In my mind, I think it makes me better. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm, I pretty consistently, um, it's, it's, I, I truly think that art is more about the repetition, not about ability. Um, I think that you can like it and can have a, and can have a talent. How much of a repetition we're really actually doing to to prog to have progress? Yeah, I want that. You go, Shannon. Well, that leads me to my something I was wondering. Um, Dylan, are you sharpening? Your I pencil? did just sharpen a pencil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so like part of the reason I don't know the answer to how long I could be, like in the van. Yeah. Is because. And, and tell me if there's hope for this because like the routines like I am really big on my routines like I've got routines and I, I need those routines like I made them and so like is there hope to get into the routine of traveling and still like we were, make new ones we were just talking about that because routine is super important um, working as an artist to be disciplined um, and, and have that kind of self-discipline and non-artists. I mean, my husband uh, manages um, his work and we, in fact, it, it was he and I that were kind of going back and forth about it. He, he does well um, if he immediately we land, you know, wherever we are and he'll, he'll find a, just recently he, he, because we're different time zones, right? Or different, you know, things happen that things are, are different. So he started to feel like if I had a routine that never changed, then it it doesn't matter that we're moving around. And I think he's had a successful 
little experiment with this and his routine has been going to a gym uh, wherever he's at he'll go and, and he'll have an hour or two to himself work out and then that kind of sets up he knows you know after I get back from the gym you know you'll eat rest whatever and and then it's a working productive day and so he kind of set that up to manage his his day that way and I definitely think that he he does well with it um, and I work a little later sometimes like I'll I'll want to sleep in <laughs> I'm a slower morning person and then I am very productive like later and so our our rhythms get a little mixed up but we, I'd have to say both of us stay pretty structured with that we don't we don't um, mess around with that too much the only thing is we will when we're traveling and especially a new place we want to explore go to the museums or something uh, how we set that up is one day it's like kind of it's it's my suggestions or what I would you know what I thought looked interesting and then he's the next and so we kind of rotate on on suggested things that we do and then um, and we and we like some things the same, but sometimes it's like, hey, if one of if somebody really wants to see something, we kind of go back and forth that way. We'll take turns, and kind of cover all bases. But it it routine's important. I mean, like you kind of have to. Yeah, I, I it wouldn't work if if we didn't have it. Yeah, both of us do different versions of a pretty structured day. I would say. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something earlier, like I think maybe seeing there's this really clear um, visual language that you have in your painting and and I guess like ab about the sedentary versus um, being on the road thing with your minimal um, kit, like yeah. that, like knowing that now that obviously is a big part of that that look of what you're creating yeah. Um, yes. and and why it all kind of um, flows together so nicely um, that's really interesting sometimes it feels cohesive and then sometimes I feel like oh it, if I had everything you know could I do a better job I don't think so mm -hmm. <laughs> I just don't I think isn't it weird that like we get told to limit if we go back to basics it's like go back to using three colors or you know go back to basics these way you know if you want to challenge yourself sometimes that's we nice. limit ourselves to challenge um, maybe that's why maybe that's why it's cohesive we're constantly being super limited I don't know yeah uh, well um I wouldn't I wouldn't know what to do with more colors maybe at this point <laughs> if I had like a huge palette. Yeah. I've found in my own process that being um, like choosing just a limited set of of tools or colors like um, yeah. and it was something I was recording a video today and just talking about it that you can you can um, within that imposed limitation you get to like stretch out and explore like what can I do with this and um, yeah. and that's really uh, I think that's a wonderful thing because I, I remember just being totally overwhelmed um, I think the the first time, like when I went to this illustration masterclass, that I um, there was a, a recommended supplies list, and I had no idea, and I bought everything, and then I had this stuff, and I was just like, "What am I going to do?" <laughs> and if someone had said, "Just bring these four paints, and this paper, and this one brush," um, then perhaps I um, it would have been a more comfortable way to kind of um, learn, because I found after after being overwhelmed then just reducing it down became the the gateway to um understanding and exploring things um yeah so that yeah interesting i i i'm like the this is so dumb i was in a i took a sewing class thinking i i don't know why i don't know why i thought i needed to learn to sew i mean it was i look back i'm like what was i thinking but I'm like, I'm going to take this sewing class and they give a list and I went and I'm buying everything on the list and I get panicked. I'm at the store and I'm like, can't find this last item. And I'm going over, I'm almost in tears because I really don't know anything about anything. And I'm just like, not even knowing why I'm taking the class. <laughs> <laughs> a lady, this little old lady, so kind. She like comes up to me and she's like, dear, it's okay. What's wrong? And I'm like, I can't find this notion. 
<laughs> if you know what a sewing notion, like it's a category. It's not an item. Notions. 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 Notion. I had been two hours walking up and down the aisle looking for a notion. I, the lady, I'll tell you the funniest thing she goes. She looks at me really seriously and she goes, quit now. <laughs> Don't take it. Just quit. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I, I, I did the skirt. I made the skirt in the class. And I've never sewn again. <laughs> <laughs> quit now. When she find a notion? heard me say that, she was like, oh, honey, just quit. <laughs> That's such wonderful, terrible advice. <laughs> Don't give up. Buy all the notions. Buy zero notions. This whole aisle. Buy everyone. Uh, <laughs> that's an exciting aisle notion. <laughs> yeah. It's got like, it's got like doodads you don't even it, what. It's like all the clips. It's like anything you could yeah. possibly need besides the fabric. But those yeah, are the notions. It's, every, it's notions. Right. Yeah, it's just. Why a are it called notions? And they call yeah. It's like it's like it's like fabric. So fabric's the word for all the fabric. Well, notions. That's like everything. <laughs> Zippers, yeah. I guess. Notion is thread a notion? Thread's not a notion. Thread's thread. No, thread is, is its own thing. I think it's like yeah. when we have accessories, everything else is a notion. I'm just like the dumbest sewer in the world. So I'm the, I, no, that's actually me. Sorry. I'm in it. <laughs> but um, you know, when they ask jewelry for, making, you know, I've tried that. I I think it's okay. I'm not the most crafty person. Things that are like hands on. I, I, it's it's the creativity, which is interesting. We all love art. We're all artists, but <laughs> here's the here's where maybe um, you are the masses come in a little bit. I had to sit here and think, how did they learn? And then I basically am like trying to follow in their footsteps. That the, to me, I thought that's how I can learn because that's what they did. Um, but. Everything else, I think you have to have a level of creativity to to do some of those things like jewelry making or yeah, I like it, but I kind of need the pattern, which is interesting. Or the things that I think I'm doing on my own, I think they're out there. <laughs> There's a word like that though. There's like one of those mysterious notions words for jewelry. Really? Maybe somebody in the chat knows what notions are. Enjoy. Yeah, it's not notions. It's like, like an el like an element. Would it be that? Yeah, like elements. Findings. 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 That's what it is. It's a jewelry maker. What are your findings? Maybe <laughs> yeah. some like scientific. <laughs> I I wanted to get into the. No, but like realizing my limitations. No, no, no. You're, I was like, you're, you're flowing. Keep flowing. Have so you flowing. taken a class that you ever thought, this is so not me, but you wanted to do something not you? Japanese. Japanese? Oh my gosh, that's cool. I failed. I failed. <laughs> I know, but that's cool that you did it. <laughs> that's like just the attempt. That's a class. I took. Mm. I took so many classes in college that didn't contribute to my degree at all because I didn't understand that like I was working toward a degree that these like I actually had it. So I just took all the classes. Okay, I that's to take. cool. Like, I, yeah, that was great. But I ended up in some really cool. But I was just like, why? Why, why am I doing Syriac? What Syriac? Really, what are you like, doing? Syriac. Yeah. It's like another. It's another Semitic language with a fancy curly alphabet that was exciting. Wow. Syriac. But yeah, I don't know. I lasted about two days, and I, I don't know why I'm here. Why am I here in Syria? <laughs> you don't know. Can so, a like, uh, building a van is like that. It's not. It's not for me. The, so, yeah. language is not your. No, language is great. Van building is. I'm burned out completely. <laughs> <laughs> completely. But yeah, it, it's tedious. Dylan, what? What's your? What have you done? What a besides Japanese, have you ever found yourself completely out of your not belonging? Mm, of not belonging. Um, no, something I, I really enjoyed, and I had no idea what it was. Um, I I went to a rainbow gathering, and there was a, a workshop about intuitive singing, 
And I was like, what's that? And, um, and there was this guy who was like a voice healer and he needed some healing. So he organized a group of people and got them to sing to him. And so I was just like, I, I had no idea what I was, what I was there for. But we, we sat together and he kind of, he led us in kind of unlocking our voices. And then he lay down in the middle of us and we just like sang. And he was lying there being uh. sung, <laughs> b- b- bazungen. Um, and so that was, a, that was actually amazing. So it's not- I would say, wasn't that cool? It was I mean, super was cool. It? Uh, yeah. But it was, it was kind of, I was sitting there and I was kind of like, oh, <laughs> what's this because uh, um it was interesting because i i don't know i guess i've had uh, an issue sharing my voice in public in the past and um and be, be sitting there and then it was it was a small group but it was kind of like um it was just so open that there was definitely that kind of like fear in the beginning but then it was like it's okay we you know we're all here we can just do this um yeah so that's very different to the Japanese experience. It is finding out you don't belong there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's. that's cool. I think it's neat because you're in a group. Because um, when you're when you're playing music like any band or like a symphony or something, you're playing just a part. And sometimes if you just heard the part, it sounds so blah or it can be the most boring part, like the bass. The guys they're just playing one long sustain long note. But I like. You have to have them. You love those bass players because their part means so much to the rest of us that it's only possible if everybody does their little part. And every once in a while, I'd be sitting there. It could like make me cry sometimes thinking about it. Like all these people sit, you know, you could have like 200 people in that symphony and they're just doing these small parts to make this amazing sound. And I, I would love it. I love doing that. Mm-hmm. But your part sounds horrible by itself. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're practicing your part and you're like, oh, this sounds horrible. But then it sounds good together. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's so yeah, cool. Part of part. Being being a small part of a of a greater whole is a very yeah. uh, special uh, thing. Yeah. Which is I think it's similar to what you do with your with your drawn together and with all your Zoom calls. You're bringing so many people and they're getting to be part of a bigger thing that's just not... Because being an artist is very isolating. It's very lonely, I think, um, that people choose to create whatever they're... <laughs> whatever they're doing. If they're sewing, <laughs> if they're... If they're doing jewelry, if they're painting, it's a very lonely um, effort sometimes. And so I love that you bring people together with mm. what you do. I think it's cool. Yeah, we love it too. Like, yeah, that's like the whole thing. Yeah, having company. Sewing's lonelier than drawing. <laughs> I would think so. Uh, maybe I, I don't know. <laughs> Because like boating, it's hell on earth. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Uh... Maybe knitting. All the people sewing out there, they're like, Rosalind's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, I tried to sew recently with a sewing machine and I have learned and done it in the past. I'm not familiar with this sewing machine and it's been a while. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to like, I'm going to modify these, these torn um, leggings uh, of my child. And then I'm like trying to sew and I'm just like, why isn't it doing what I want it to do? And it's like, ah! <laughs> it just became this um, incredibly frustrating um no, activity the, it is like straight seams or something like Recent. making out. i could sew that way but i thought i needed to learn mm. how to follow a pattern for some reason i don't know why but that's what i couldn't do i couldn't figure out the fancy stuff but like i would make my daughter little sundresses and things mm. and it's not really i mean i didn't consider it really sewing or knowing how to do it bad sewing machine I can. Yeah. It's bedtime. It's bedtime. I can. Dad, I can. Shannon says hello, but it's bedtime. The, I can. The, Hi, Shannon. The sewing machine is like, hey. I can has a, like a, a sleepover birthday party tomorrow, and so he should be getting to bed, so he's nice and fresh for tomorrow, because he's probably not sleeping much tomorrow. This is oh. Rosalind and Shannon. Hi. Hi. I can will be ten in September. Hi. 
10's the best age. <laughs> 10 is the best You're age, Rosalind says. Yeah. yeah. And he's eating a lime. Mm. Um, right before bed. Right before bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was painting with it uh, yesterday, and now he's eating it. Um, Ricardo's here. Hello, Ricardo. Ricardo said he was going to miss this and he wanted to say hello and he loved your work and how you work with light. But now Ricardo is here. So welcome, Ricardo. Um, Hi, Ricardo. I loved watching. I watched part of, I caught part of his, um, when the drawing drawn together. He is, he's a joy. <laughs> he is he, so, so fun. He's, he's wonderful. So we'll have to do this. Again. <laughs> we love you, Ricardo. Um, this is this is harking back to an, an earlier stage in our conversation. But um, Julie also asked, uh, how did the kids and grandkids take it um, with the the shift to um, being on the road? I guess um, we're referring to yeah. Yeah. So uh, my my children and uh, my husband and I we farmed for thirty years. So you farmed. Uh, we did. We wow. um, in Idaho, and that's a group effort farming. I feel like uh, that those kids really worked with us too, and they're probably relieved we're not farming anymore. <laughs> um, no, they miss the farm sometimes, but they're on with their lives now. They're all grown and starting their families. Um, but when we're in town, we are all together. Like we're. We're, we're having a great time and the grandkids are the best gig in the world. Like that's my favorite thing in the world. There's nothing better than, than those kids like happy to see me um, and getting to spoil them and, and then hand them back to the parents. That's like the best job. So, um, you know, I think it's fun because they look forward to when we're coming. And also if there are times that they've come to where we are last year around Thanksgiving, my daughter brought her two children to Italy and they were with us for 10 days. And then they, and then they went back home. And then my youngest son for Thanksgiving and Christmas came to uh, Paris and London. We, we did the holidays there with those cities and that, and, and so he, he spent it with us there. And so um, it's kind of, it takes a lot of planning, it, especially if people are, are wanting to, you know, go back and forth but if it works out if they can come and see us and then if not they know for sure in three to four months we'll be back with them and it's really we haven't missed any big events we've been there for almost everything I don't think we've we haven't felt like if anything sometimes I mean with FaceTime we're together most days if we need to have our group chat we usually all see each other um, so I don't think I would have liked this if we didn't have the technology that we have nowadays. Um, thinking back to my own childhood and, and how you know things are so different, I probably wouldn't have liked to be away like I am. But I feel like I'm I feel like I'm in their lives every day. So I don't feel like I'm missing anything. And then I do see them all the time. Yeah, cool. And then if they they come see me, so it it does work. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do think. If we moved someplace permanently, that would have a bigger impact. But we're, with what we're doing, we get together so much. Mm. So nice. What did you find? We um, so Idaho, they're known for their potatoes, and um, we have done potatoes. But the bulk of the thirty years we farmed was like alfalfa, grain, hay, things that would be for feed um, that got exported to wherever like dairies or horses or uh, I know at one point I said where is that getting exported to and it was weirdly getting sent to the Middle East for camels it was they can export to wherever so feed for livestock <laughs> I guess so yeah they can ship it anywhere but the uh, sewing machine didn't do what dad wanted it to do right yeah We've moved on in the conversation and it's that bedtime. Is so and this slime isn't doing what I'm what what I want it to do either. You're not doing what I want you to do. I want you to go to bed. <laughs> but I don't want to go to bed. Let's go to bed. It's it's ten past ten. I want to eat lime. Go to bed. With the lime. 
Go to bed, please. I'll see you tomorrow. Pipe. I can't sleep. You're not trying to sleep. Group efforts activate sleep. a different level of us as collective beings in art or working together in nature, etc. And and friendships and drawing groups. Persistent drawing groups that persist. And yeah. I love that. Well, I think we're pretty fortunate that we're working together in nature. I, I think we're really fortunate that we get this. I mean, the technology is here that we get to even do this. I can imagine that like, my grandparents were away, like they traveled extensively. So it was always really mysterious. They wouldn't, I mean, like no video calling, obviously, because it was like exactly. 1980, but like <laughs> it's very mysterious and very absent and very disconnected and weird for sure. It's I, it would be a different, it would be a, oh, a probably different decision if we didn't have the, the abilities that, yeah, we have. I mean, even my, so my family, like my mother, siblings, you know, when they'll, I, like, because I like to visit and check in and they'll be um, like, you know, where are you, where, where will you be next month? And legit, sometimes it'll be like, well, I don't know quite yet. It's, but it's so easy just to get on your phone and take a few minutes and go, oh, well, here's this destination. And I, okay, it's booked in two seconds through, you know, Airbnb or wherever. I mean, it's, it's so convenient. It's yeah, not, um, not the hardship that I, I think, well, you learn the system. It, it can be, can be a little scary at first, but yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's last minute. Yeah. yeah like I'm an going to be so difficult. <laughs> I'm excited to see what you're doing with your van. I, I think seriously, Shan, I think you're going to think it's the best thing ever. I think you're going to love it. So far, far is rad. Like, waking up like even though I didn't find a fancy place like just like making coffee in a new spot in the morning was like really moving and then like I can totally understand why like all these van life girls have like a coffee making segment in all of their YouTube videos <laughs> like I've seen it it's like it has like a little coffee making segment and it's like ritualistic and I get it yeah so like that was yeah and like just like talking to different people is my favorite like, I talked to two women on a four-day trip, and, like, I just happened to, like, attract these s little, like, maybe 20 years older than me women who were, like, wanting to talk and, like, share, and, like, it was really exciting. Like, I felt like I was on a, I don't know, like, they were so... I bet they're welcoming. That's the word I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I bet they're very welcoming. Yeah, it was like that, like, they wanted to share, like... Like, there was no, like, like, I learned about one woman's work at the Northwest Florida Water Management Facility, and then this, I, this other woman had a camera, and she looked like she knew where the birds were, and since I'm not, like, a really fancy birder, I just follow other people that look like they know where the birds are, and that's how, because, like, that's easier to see. And then, like, we ended up having this conversation about, like, the watershed and Danbar Cave, and it was really neat. Like, I want that to happen more. Like, that's the thing that I like. A little kid, little kids look at the van and they're like, it's so big. And they're like, yeah, you get, like, caught in the ladder. And the dad's like, no, you can't. So are you going, like, on weekends mostly? Or are you thinking of doing, like, extended, some ex extended? Extended. Extended. Well, I needed a place to live while I was um, redoing my father's property. And I don't know what's happening with that. Um... And so, and I also need to get away from here, but it's just me, like, it's like sewing or like drawing, it's very like, uh, God, but I found out I can only, I can only drive like four hours before I start to hurt, like all over, yeah. just from being still, because I have to move, like I have to move a lot. So that's news, so yeah, it's like, as long as there's a place to park every four hours, or like, 
some place to explore after driving four hours, like a place to hike, a place to work out. Well, that's running water is really important. I'm working on that. The routine, you know, you're that's like an establishing, yeah, you're establishing your routine, so that's good. Yeah, the first night was so great, and like the next morning, I ran. Like, I don't run, but like, I ran like a yeah, mile. Energy. So. Well, half a mile up a hill and half down. You're yeah. cooped up. And that was really neat. I was like a new person. Like, who am I? I'm running. That's crazy. Well, any new, I especially with travel, I the one, there is like a ma magic number of, there's a point where people want to quit. It's weird. Not quit, but they, it's a homesickness that everyone kind of feels. And I would say it's probably like three to four months in, um, if you, if you're going and like, like I'm, you know, I'm going to do this, this big change type of thing. And there's a point where you're just like, why, why am I doing this? Or, you know, it's a home, there's a sense of homesick sickness. Um, and it goes away. Like, it's kind of like something to work through and then it, it does go away. Now I'm not saying that periodically. Like, you know, I always put it in like nine great days. You might have a day that you're kind of like, oh, this is really kind of a challenging thing. Because I think people, the misconception of traveling all the time sounds like it's like a vacation, like a vacation all the time, but it's actually more of a, of a, there's an effort put in, especially if you're moving a lot. Um, I personally like to go someplace for a month or six weeks and, and you get kind of felt, you know, you feel kind of settled before you leave again, but we've done it where it's like every five days or, you know, three days or every week or something. Um, yeah, it can be a little, it, 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 there's work and planning that goes into it that can get, get tiring. So it doesn't feel like a vacation. It, right. it feels, that's what you it feels like part-time job reminding me of my realization because I was only gone for four days or four and a half days and one thing I noticed that, like because I haven't traveled in a long time like you you'd cry if you knew like like how long it had been since I got anywhere it was very sad um and then I just took off and then what I noted was just like really enormous was that all my goals became very short like everything was a short-term goal yeah. like everything was like when am I gonna eat when am I gonna pee when am I gonna sleep when am I gonna like park and then do I need gas and when and like everything like every single decision there is no distant horizon yeah, there's just like all yeah. really survivally yeah there's an immediate issue and that's all you're dealing with yeah and that's kind of that was like that was a little bit of a vacation but like there was no like there's no yeah. I started to miss even after that short time just to come down and like I keep thinking like there's like this mindset you know when you sit and you got the light coming in and you suddenly like enjoy your home and right in your spot and you have your book and you have your thing and that's not there yeah. and I haven't had that in a long time yeah and it made it seem really obvious that I haven't felt that in so long yeah it's a real thing so eventually <laughs> there's things to I mean it's like a creative challenge I would put it that way you have to there's a creative challenge that you have to substitute like where instead of if you think of like oh I, I miss certain things you have to kind of substitute it in different ways and it's funny because my husband has his own way of, of I think you know I don't know if he he feels like the same exact or I know if he does it's not on the same days that I'm feeling it but he'll just go um uh, oh, I'll, I'll say something like, oh, I'm, don't, don't you miss home about this? And he'll just, just go, you're my home. No, that, you know, like, where are you from? Well, she's my home. Like, he'll put it on me. Like, that's how he kind of, I think, thinks of it. Like, well, she's my home. I'm with her, so I'm home. And I'm like, it's not as simple in my mind. <laughs> I'm like, home is, is you know, there's, there's certain things that I'm expecting. So it, it might be as simple as like you're saying, making coffee, like when you're saying that video, that makes total sense to me because that would be a sense of home for somebody. So that's, yeah, yeah. what do we do? <laughs> we make our home. There's like, yeah. home is where the heart is or whatever, but like, there's also like an energy of traveling. I was talking to Dylan about this earlier. It was like, 
there's like a like um a motion like an oscillation like a long and short term travel yeah. or like long distance and short distance and like the the energy needed to like go a long distance which i've never really gone a long distance um i went from florida to banff canada and that's probably the longest that's a long term but like i was young yeah yeah but i was like 13 so I, that your perception of time and motion are different i think mine were but yeah wasn't that like it's like uh sounds it's ex- super long at that age like yeah like it i don't know it's and then when I was 20, I could drive for, you know, 24 hours at a time. And that was not a big deal. No, you got to stop and walk around. Driving takes it out of you. Yeah, like, it does. I, it takes it. Yeah, about four or five hours. I always, even if it's not a gas, I want to walk around a little bit. For real. Yeah, you just start building. But that's another good thing about the sprinter, because you can stand up in the driver's seat and just walk to the back. Like, you don't have to go out, that's what which I'm is really saying. nice. I, I always like looking at the sprinters just because of that. You can pull over and stand and walk, and I think it's it's a good choice. I actually think they're smart. Yeah. That was my, yeah, that was the best. Because I went from a little transit council in the center. Yeah. It was so uncomfortable. You had to get out and, like, go all the way out. And then it puts you at risk, like, having to leave the van and go. Yeah. Into the security issue, probably. Yeah. No, a sprinter... Yeah, that was the draw for the sprinter. I'm excited for you. You're going to love it. Thank you me. are. I'm liking it so far. I was going to go to Arkansas. Oh, I love Arkansas. Mm, it's so cool. great. Where's good in Arkansas? I like Fayetteville, um, Little Rock, and then right around there, there are little towns just getting to it. There's actually a town called, um, oh, remember it, Toad. It's called Toad, like Toad Stuck or st- <laughs> Stuck Toad. I don't know if I have to Google it. It's like Toad Stuck or something. And I'm like, is this really a town? And and it is. It's like Toad something. Like, I'm going to Google it. It's driving me nuts. another funny one. I can't remember what I saw. There's another really weird town name. Arkansas. I just saw it yesterday. And I- so no silly. one come after me because I love Arkansas. So don't be like, oh, don't make fun of our toad stuck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love cool. it. I was looking at Eureka Springs because you can go swimming. Like there's yeah. this, the lakes are like clear. It's super pretty. Um, that's a really pretty part. Um, let's, let's see, Arkansas. Toad stuck. That's it. Toad stuck. It's actually worse than I thought. Toad stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, Thank you, Matt. Like, it's the worst. It's like the worst name. I'm like, you guys have a city meeting and change the name. <laughs> <Yeah, Toad Suck. laughs> um, just reverse yeah. it. So, Toad Suck, Arkansas. Yeah. And, you know, it's just fun to say you've been there. Like, where were you, Toad Suck, Arkansas? <laughs> yeah. um, oh, are, is there any, are there any opportunities to suck toads there? Like, <laughs> I, I hope not. <laughs> that was <laughs> but I wonder if um, it's synthetic now. You don't have to look. Yeah, I wonder if people have had any um, visionary things. experiences there, which led them to settling the town. And um, there, there could be. It, it sounds like an interesting. Um, what do you think the, the decision behind? You know, what motivated just Toad Suck? I mean, you guys, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I want to think it was like a misunderstanding. Could be deep. <laughs> Could be deep. Or like somebody lost a bed. <laughs> Some lost, lost translation. Um, or it was <laughs> like what? flipping of coins between two new towns. And it's like, well, you can't be called Toad Suck because we want to be called Toad Suck. Um, and then it was like, I don't know. Where, where is it? I don't know. It was just some <laughs> generic town name and they like had to flip a coin and either the winner or the loser. Anderson. Ar- yeah. <laughs> um, I ages ago I wanted to ask you um, about the the master studies and how you yeah. how you came to that and um, like was it clear when you started traveling that like I like did you have a vision for the kind of work you wanted to be doing while you were traveling and um, yeah. and how do you yeah. 
do you just like go to a museum and then look at a bunch of art and like oh that's amazing i i want to i want to have a go at that one or like um how did you get to it and what's the process of like choosing what you what what calls to you um years and years ago i think everyone can relate when you very start drawing or very start painting making your endeavor um that you just think everything would be impossible like there's no way i could possibly do that yeah. and and it, everything seems so hard right because you're learning and that's normal and um and i remember that feeling of thinking uh at the masters like who i admired thinking you know it just seems impossible and so there i i as a musician i knew the steps that i needed to take to, pra to practice, I, I I have a good understanding I of practice and, and implementing that, and um, and so there was a, a definite point that I made that decision that I have to do the same thing that like I started violin when I was a five year old, and I would say making that decision to to seriously paint was probably you know around 2012. 15 something you know it was around I, I remember actually it was when Pinterest like came on you know as an app type of thing yeah and um, I think it was pre Instagram where images you could look up images and look at the paintings and I you know I was getting a, a little pretty good resolution with some of the images I wanted to study and so I made that was the deciding factor was um, I just have to be a student in practice and this is what they did they would um, study other artists and that you know makes sense to me as a student and so um, I really felt that portraits were the most calling to me like that was the only thing that possibly could be interesting in my mind I didn't want to do a flower or a landscape or it just I wanted the the human you know figure or face to be and that felt like it had everything I felt like a face could be a landscape I mean you're literally moving across like you're doing a landscape so it felt like if I could do that portrait then I could do anything and so that's why I went that direction and then once the travel um, element came into it it became kind of a pilgrimage with certain artists and also their lives who they admired if you're looking at like uh, Manet or uh, so like kind of early impressionist who he was looking at would be like um, you know Franz Hall also Sargent he was a one of Hall's biggest fans so Franz Hall became important to me because it was important to them um, so I, I I knew who they were through their passions as well, like who, who they loved and admired. So I I learned about them because it, it influenced them. <laughs> I don't know, it all we all influence each other. So it it was interesting because there were people that I, I didn't like initially and I didn't see the value of study them of studying them until I got into it. And that happened I can relate it to music. There's been pieces that I hated to learn and was upset that a teacher expected me to memorize and spend six months of my life on a song that I absolutely hated. Mm -hmm. And it would be like 15 minutes of something, like literally six months of my life to learn this piece. And then at the end of the experience to be in love with it, um, which is funny because you know it that well. And so art can be that way sometimes. I definitely have been somebody I was not enthused about, um, which has been different because I used to just pick people I like, but I, in the further I researched, the more I realized there were certain people I needed to educate myself about. And so I went about doing it in the same way that a teacher or a student would have to do it. And then um, I, I definitely saw the lessons or some improvement, um, even if it's slight. I definitely learned lessons from everybody. I, you know, being in Spain, um, uh, the month of May, I think I did tw about almost twenty-five studies of Soroya mm -hmm. of um, his work, 
and it was a lot of studies of one person. I've done it. I've done that before with other people, but being there with that specific one, uh, I can see why he painted. It really made sense why he painted the light the way he did. It looks like. I mean, I, I never really connected that <laughs> there was there was a simple reason for it. That's what he saw. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't contrived at all. <laughs> it was like he really was observant and um, very good at seeing that um, those lights and shadows the way he did. And then those colors are so bright there. And so I, I felt like there's just a lot to learn from everybody. There really is. And so I I like to I don't know. I like to be open, and try to pay attention, and. Um, that's crazy, like, Saroya, I would never think, to, like, those lighting effects actually hurt It's my so eyes. bright. It's so bright. Like, yeah. It's, I, yeah. I actually painted, I, when I went out on, like, location, and, like, when I started, and I have to say, I never planned or painted until quarantine. I, I, like, tons of credit to those guys and tons of credit to Nicholas Uribe, which I don't think of, like, oh, yeah, he's this landscape painter. He can paint anything, that man. He's just that good. But we were landscape painting, and I I continued um, I continued doing it, and the the light was so bright. I I wore sunglasses. I felt like it helped me a lot, and I I thought I could see the the values even a little bit better with sunglasses. But I yeah, that sun that sun was bright. <laughs> it was it was um, I don't know. That's that might be like other people at landscapes like this all the time but I don't know if that's a thing or not but I certainly thought it it helped my eyes a little bit hmm. see yeah having the use a little having the filter of the sunglasses yeah. I lost my sunglasses about a year ago and I remember in certain situations where I'd be, perceive things differently because of the sunglasses and now it's just kind of been yes. like a, a personal challenge to be like maybe my eyes can adjust to the light yeah. Um, but sometimes I'll be um, yeah, somewhere and I just kind of remember, oh, when I would look at things like this with sunglasses, it would be like that. And it's interesting just to have that filter. Um, it's, a little, it's a little tool. And it, it might be like a little bit of a cheat, but in that bright of, of settings, I admire those people that see it and paint that way. But I did. I was like, let me let me ease my eyes into this a little bit. It's and I'm not used to it. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm not a very experienced landscape painter, but I have continued it. And, and, um, I, I just like everything else, there's lots of room for improvement. <laughs> so, so I'll keep doing it. I'll, I'll keep working on it. And so, cool. you know, maybe I'll learn to like it one of these days. No. <laughs> I, um, when I, when I used to travel a lot, I hadn't really, um, I wasn't really taking art seriously back then. Um, like it was just one of mm -hmm. one of the things that I would have a sketchbook and occasionally I'd, I'd draw something. Um, and I kind of, like there's nothing I can change about what's happened and so many wonderful things have happened. But it's like, oh, if I had been, if I'd been really into it back then, if I'd already kind of been on that path. But, I, you know, everything just works out how it, how it works out. Um, okay. But I have that, I just imagine... Because I can remember seeing art in certain places or being in certain situations, um, and I used to like I'd take photos and think, oh, maybe I'll paint this or draw this later, which most of the time I didn't. I see something like, oh, that's so cool! I'd love to draw it. And there was a few a few situations where I did, but I imagine if I were to do so now, um, that now I'm really like committed to this path. Um, it's something that I I sometimes dream about, like ah. Oh, like combining art and traveling and um yeah so it's really it's really cool and inspiring to see like what you're doing and your your output and um dylan do you take a lot of pictures are you um good about that do i do what? because i I'm taking a lot of pictures are you good at taking a lot of pictures i um it depends uh, I, don't, I feel like that's a talent and, and one that, that really helps, like... Yeah, like yeah. I, an artist to have 
Really? Yeah, I have, um, my dad's a photographer and he came to visit like oh. nine years ago. And, and I was like, I take photos and I'm in this beautiful, amazing place. And it's like, wow, this is incredible. And I take the photos and I look at them and I'm like, this is boring. <laughs> and, um, oh, wow. and so he, he spent a month with us and I was like, how do I take photos that aren't boring? And, um, and he was like, yeah. well, if you turn around <laughs> and take that photo, see, that looks really interesting. And, um, and it was it was all about light and so I had like a, a one month masterclass from my dad um, just about photography and oh. um, and so that that taught me so much about how I um, how I create images and how I look at things and now I notice I was just thinking recently sometimes I won't take a photo because I'm like this doesn't actually look interesting this is nice but it's not a cool composition so I just leave it and um, so now it's like which I, I wonder sometimes, I, I have I have too many photos taken, <laughs> um, like I, I I can't I can't sort through them all, but um, I'm not as prolific as I used to be because now I'm kind of like oh if if it looks really compelling compositionally as well as being like a special moment or whatever then that's like the moment to take a photo, um, but there's a, a totally different mindset like when I used to travel and I'd be like in photo mode and I was constantly like oh what if I what if I lie down to look at this thing and so I used to do, um, used to do that a lot more, like have that kind of um, photo mindset. I need, I need your dad to give me a master yeah. class. I really feel like I, I lack in that area, and it's so important. Mm -hmm. You're so lucky. Yeah, yeah. You grew up with them. It's really, it's really awesome. But I, I was thinking, I um, in, there was something in the, like some of the studies you're doing. And then like when I said how it's, it's like, it's, it's crossing over into your personal work, like along with Rosie and just seeing the way things yeah. are coming together. And, and that's something that I, I thought I saw there that like, oh, there's these, there's this compositional quality to a lot of the master studies you're working with, which is like, like seeing that in your personal work was a really cool thing. Cause it's like some of that, <laughs> that image kind of vocabulary is um, like crossing over into that, which is really cool. Like seeing the way that the different shapes connect elements of a composition and stuff. And yeah. And it can be so varied sometimes. I wonder, I'm like, it, yeah, I, I, I understand exactly, exactly what you're saying. I see everybody sometimes. I, well, I see my handwriting. I see my brushwork, but I can see um, different ones that I know I learned from different people, but it's consistently me. If that makes yeah, sense, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm like, I see me, it's just me, but I know exactly where I'm getting that and drawing that from. And so it's fun sometimes to figure it out. It's like languages Art, I think art and artists, we all speak, you know, our own languages a little yeah. bit and, and to try to be fluent in a different person's style or their language, it's it's fun to try for a little bit or learn as much as possible, but you always revert back to your own native or you're translating through your own native way of, of, of expressing, you know, and so it, 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 we all, yeah, it all influences each other, but you, you can't help but go back to the think or you speak, but but I'll tell you a funny thing. I was in a museum and my husband was with me and um, I was really beeline. I was making a beeline straight, straight for a certain hallway that I wanted to show him something. We were in London. It was at the National Museum there. And he um, he was behind me and I'm like, hurry it up. You got to got to keep up. We got to get through this hallway. And he had stopped like all of a sudden just stopped in front of this. It was really this boring room that just had rocks and it had like some statues and I'm like, come on, we're going to the paintings. And so I had to turn around and go back and get them. And he's like, do you know what this is? And I'm like, yeah, I saw it last time I was here. It's nothing. And he goes, no, do you know what this is? I'm like, it's a rock, you know, let's go to the paintings. He's like, Rosalind, this is the Rosetta Stone. <laughs> and I'm like, and? <laughs> <laughs> and he was this big tablet, you know, he's like, all languages come from here. And I'm like, that's super neat. But we have like an hour left to get to the hallway I'm wanting to go to. And <laughs> he always laughs about that story because he's like, I was so thrilled. He was thrilled he got 
to see the Rosetta Stone that day. Like if you would have asked him hours later, like what was the highlight of your day? He would have said the Rosetta Stone. And I would have had 10 other answers. You just, you just but ran past <laughs> beyond, it. Yeah, beyond that rock that I was like, why are you looking at that rock? Leave it alone. <laughs> um, <laughs> stop standing there. Um, but it really, he was like, you know, how, you know, historically important it is and what it all meant, means to the world and, and all that. It has all these great things, but still. <laughs> um, but I do think of, of art as languages that we have all had to, even from the very beginning, cave drawing, you know, cave paintings, you know, we have had to come so far in these languages and adapt and, and learn to speak each other's languages to an, an extent, but we can never be each other's person. I mean, you just can't copy that. It's impossible, but we can certainly learn So. It, the trick is saying it in a way somebody else can understand, right? Yes. Like, oh, you like the Rosetta Stone? What does it say? <laughs> That's the point. It's so mysterious. What does it say? I don't even know. It's maybe a it's recipe. Say, do people know what it it's says? It's like hieroglyphs, <laughs> isn't it? It's just like where it's where lang it's. I guess it's where language comes from. It's it's symbols. It's the first example of symbols in written language. Is I think I could be totally off you guys because I did not stand and read the plaque at the Rosetta Stone. <laughs> I don't blame you. What, what were you in a hurry to see? What did you want to, what was bigger for, for you um, than the origin of written language? <laughs> any painting after 8,000 8, or, or 1820. <laughs> any, I don't know. You know. How sometimes you get stuck in the wrong hallway and you're just like, why am I? <laughs> in this hallway forever I just I knew I knew I needed to get to um, yeah at least at least a little before the impressionist before we got out of there we were like on a on a I I had gone so I went to London by myself for a couple weeks um, well, this was years ago he was farming and was busy and couldn't come with me and every day I spent at the museum um, different museums, but every day that's all I did all day. And so I, I'm thinking it was a Turner. There was a Turner painting that I knew he would love if we could get to it. <laughs> um, you know, the yellow over the ocean, mm -hmm, you know, yeah. the, or not ocean, Thames with the, the oh, yes, nice. it's a beautiful Turner, um, has a boat in it. I'm sure I could say, look, here's a boat. <laughs> I was trying to find a painting he would like, um, and I'm sure that I'm sure that's where we're heading because that's that that's that area that Turner painting. I'm sure it was there. I think I think I've seen, but, seen that. Um, my dad's really into Turner, yeah, Turner as well, and um, it's almost like oh yeah. Well, I think most, most people. He's an enjoyable. I mean, like beautiful light. His composition is so it's just so elegant and simple, but ele you know he he just nails it, and so. Yeah, I think that's a that's a sure bet for somebody to go look at this. Yeah. <laughs> and he's he's pretty patient. I have to say, he's very patient in um, in the music. He is, as long as there's not a rock, I guess. Yeah. Like <laughs> um, Keep right up. I, I was just wondering for for your studies, um, like, do you do much like right in the museum? I, I saw you had somewhere you like bought postcards of pieces and. I guess you're like working from those prints and stuff like I do um I have drawn um like like pencil and pen I've never heard uh because there's a process when you ask to be paint you know to be allowed to paint in a museum and I would like to do that someday because it just be I think that would just be a, a blast um but you you know there, there's a they they check you know check your background a little bit and you just have to fill out the paper and and sometimes I'm not there long enough to think oh would it be worth it to like because they only have certain days and and things but there are rules about okay. that and I would if he likes doing that I suggest going for it but they have rules about drawing and and pencils and pens um they they'll have a rule about it sometimes it's pencils only or hmm. something you know like to that effect um, and some of 
some of them don't want you drawing. You know, just I typically will do what they're asking. I've never. No, some people are like, oh, just take it in your bag. I think I'm, I look too sneaky. I think they'd find me out. <laughs> I, I don't think I could do it quietly enough. Right. Um, but the time, <laughs> I, I, you know, have you guys ever painted like in a coffee shop of other people? I'm a person that stares. I'm not the sneaky person. <laughs> I've, I'm like the I'm the awkward. I <laughs> we get caught out. They catch me staring, and then yeah. I have to say, "Oh, I'm drawing a picture of you like a weirdo." And then I I, I typically give them the picture because I always get caught. Yeah. And so I, I'm I'm not good like so. Um, I wonder if you're, if you're I, looking at the other um, guests in the cafe and you're kind of like. <laughs> I know. I'm, uh, what's that? I'm like, and I'm not in the not blinking either. I'm not blinking. I'm just <laughs> straight up staring. <laughs> I'm trying to make them as uncomfortable as possible. <laughs> and you actually like pull up a chair next to them and just stare at them. <laughs> you know, I was at a restaurant one time with my mother, and she saw me doing it. She leans over to the other table and tells the guy I'm drawing. <laughs> That was fun. <laughs> she's like, she's drawing you, and I'm like, oh, that just made it really fun. Now yeah. it's like halfway. Yeah, um, I, but I'm not sneaky enough. I need to be more sneaky. Sneaky or courageous, like that. That's um. Yes. Maybe I last week I, I did a couple of live events, and I've been doing this. I did like six minute portraits at live events, and I've been practicing that for for almost three and a half years every Tuesday come and draw with me Tuesday if you're still watching um yeah and we do 30 you've been there 30 seconds to six minute portraits and it was um yeah. it was the first time I was getting paid to do six minute portraits and so I was kind of like oh ah. um you know it's all right when that's it's just me and my sketchbook and and no one cares but what's it going to be like when I'm actually sitting there with them because yeah. you know it doesn't always work out <laughs> And then it might be like, oh, no, no. here's a picture. <laughs> um, but then it's like, I, yeah, so that was really practice. You do it live. I have to tell you, this is like, I admire this so much because I would like to be able to feel absolutely no pressure. Like when, if I'm painting and drawing and someone's like over my shoulder, I would love to not feel like, I don't know. Do you ever get? It, does it ever not feel like that? Because you you're online and it's like people are watching. That's like over your shoulder. Do you ever get the idea of like, ah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, people are watching. Yeah. It doesn't I, matter. I feel like some of my um, I've made some pretty big mistakes in some of my earlier live streams, which were not on my channel. <laughs> but um, I was live streaming yeah. with Sketchy, and there were sometimes, and I remember talking with Jordan about it afterwards. I was like, oh, halfway through, I was just kind of like, what am I doing? And um, and then it was like, oh, but the, it, an interesting thing about it is um, like I noticed I was caught up in the conversation. And so like responding to people in the chat, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, but I was like really engaging with the chat and talking about stuff. And then I'm just kind of like going along and then I look at the painting and I'm just kind of like, oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then pretty early on in my live streaming career, I, f I felt like I had some really big moments where I was like, oh, that's like, that's one of the my least favorite things that I've made recently. Um, and it was live in front of a whole bunch of people. And it's just like, huh. And because I was there in the middle of it, it I hadn't really thought yeah. thought about it before. Did you care or did you? Hmm? It's, it's, more, it's more you caring though, yeah. right? Because they're not yeah, yeah, caring. No. It, yeah. and, and, and that was the thing, um, uh, Jordan, who's uh, running Sketchy, I said to him afterwards, I was like, oh, I, had, I really had like a gut wrenching moment there where I was like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? And he was like, oh, really? You, that was great. <laughs> so um, he yeah. he didn't notice. Yeah, no. yeah. And, um, and I guess the people who were there drawing along and chatting, like it, it was my thing that at some point I was like, oh, I thought I thought I could do this. <laughs> and now there's like a whole bunch of people watching and I'm just like, Ugh. Um, but I think having that happen was then kind of like, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that I don't want to look at this painting ever again, because it was a 
like the the actual experience of doing that doing it together with people or even i would like and then i would notice things sometimes then i like call it out or when i record a tutorial as well and i'm like oh that's oh that's a bit <laughs> and then i'll try think maybe that's an interesting experience to kind of talk through and share um and to be like this is not perfect uh this is not working out how i wanted this is how i'm gonna roll with it and deal with it and then i think that's interesting especially especially from people who are i think it's so it's good that you acknowledge it and yeah. and show that everyone's saying seeing that your process is very similar to what they themselves go through yeah yeah and that's the feedback i got as well the people are like oh you you make mistakes <laughs> like everyone um which i have never claimed not to but um I, I might be, but that's what yeah, I might, yeah, I might be a few years further or a, a, a thousand faces further in my practice than someone else. Um, and, mm -hmm. but I, I know what it's like to, to be afraid of making a mark on the page and then to go through the process of doing it and it works out. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes people are even watching when it doesn't work out and it all doesn't matter. It's okay. <laughs> um, it's because if you're filming, I, and I think you and I have both filmed for, I think, or anyway, but if you're filming classes for content, mm -hmm. yeah, and um, I've looked at things that I filmed and I've listened back because you might do voiceovers or I'll edit things, and I was listening to see if I needed to voiceover or edit. And in the video, as I was painting something that was going horribly wrong, this was me fixing it as I was working. And I said, as like, this is such good advice. I'm like, you know what? Pick the right color, put it in the right place. Just do it. <laughs> and I was like, well, I've got to edit that out. I mean, like, I'm just like, just pick the right color, put it in the right place. It's as simple as that. But that was my teaching advice. Yeah that I'm like, people are going to be watching this video and I'm like, pick the right color, put it in the right place, <laughs> fix it, you know? Honestly. It's wrong, fix it again. <laughs> You're gonna fix it over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought every time I've been really into painting something because I don't paint as often as I draw, but every time I've painted, it's pick the right color, put it in the right place. <laughs> yeah. I've thought the same exact thing is all it oh, That's all you do. That's what it. Is it. That's the secret recipe to painting. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's as simple yeah, as that, yeah. folks. <laughs> you heard it here first. Now, I, mean, I think it gets frustrating, but the thing is, um, you know, depending on what you're working in, you'll, you'll start tearing your hair out if you're in oil because you have to be a lot more cautious about your decision and you have to work more in your palette before you make those decisions because you'll muddy it up but if you're working in water soluble you can have a mistake and you can realize and acknowledge that there's a mistake because you can paint over mm -hmm. it and so um, and and so sometimes i think for learning purposes it's really great to just say you know um it's it's a different type of you know learning i guess if you're doing an online class to say give up the oil for a little bit if you want to just do something quick if you want to try to quickly get a concept but if you want to take your time and slow down i do think um you're going to benefit from from being slower and taking the time to do things more cautiously with oil so it really you know both ways are great it just depends on what the lesson's in mm. but <laughs> you'll get different degrees of <clears throat> me saying pick the right color put it in the right place <laughs> No, you'll be happy to know I edited that to be a very, you know, kind and gentle <laughs> fix it. <laughs> I, I have fix also it. definitely um, just like dropped my drawing tools on the paper and sighed <laughs> and started again. <laughs> or or sometimes I've had those moments where I've just like edited a bit out because it's just like, oh. sometimes it's just kind of, <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. I call those the scare the jump scare all of a sudden it's this whole new thing in front of you it's like nope i edited to this point <laughs> <laughs> you didn't need to see i i had, had some dirty um like it was watercolor i had watercolor and i had um my my jar of water which was needed to be changed and i was probably frustrated but the whole jar of dirty watercolor went across the page like i, I tipped oh. over 
And I was really tempted to just like leave it like, there you go, there's your lesson. But no, I redid it all. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just that's the... um... It's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. And over. (laughs) You're welcome. We're going to end early today. Thanks. (laughs) Yeah. It's all making me want to do a master's study. I, I don't, when's the last time I drew something somebody else drew or painted? You had that idea know. that we could pass around drawings. Like there was a pencil drawing I did. I, I mean, never did it, but I think it's such a cool idea to like have a, um, like just keep drawing each other's drawings and see what happens with it. That was um, like her game okay kind mm. of uh, it might change as it goes around yeah exactly um yeah like telephone that, that would be Let's fun that. that'd be cool uh, actually Actual sounds right. yeah anyone who's still watching in the chat if you would be interested in like passing around a piece of art um we're, we're not ending yet. I was just wondering, like, oh, we've been going for a while, but now you're here, Charlotta, so let's <laughs> let's keep talking. Um, I don't know. We might end <laughs> soon, but thanks for joining. Um, but yeah, there was this... Shannon had this idea. I did a drawing. I think it was, like, January last year in the 30 Faces 30 Days, and you were like, oh, I wonder what it would be like to draw someone's drawing, which you didn't do, but you could do, and we could, like, pass it around, and we could keep, like, drawing from each other's drawing. That could be really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Actually, that would be really fun. Yeah. Let's, let's okay, do it. Okay, let's do uh, it. Gosh, Dylan, I thank you for remembering. Yeah. Yeah. Junk I, say. I, I, I remember. remember I remember the. Movie. I remember which drawing I, it was as well. I'll, I'll send it to you, and you can draw it. <gasps> which drawing was it? I'll I think remember it's it if you, someone I don't remember it then. sitting like that. Okay, you send it to me. I'll draw it, and I'll send it to the next person. So, are you going to draw it and then send your version to the next? So you'll get to keep. The, the drawing that Dylan sent you. Ah, yeah, we, we can do it. We can physically send That'd it around. Cool. That'll be insane. And then we could like... Are you going to and just send the original picture around, around, around? Which one? Uh, I don't know. Because it could work both ways. Yeah, we, we could pass it on and we could also like create um, a place for it to live where you see like the reference image and each consecutive drawn image. Um, that was the that was the clincher. You ah, can't see the okay. reference image. Or only the drawings. Oh. That was what it was. Because it's so going to change into a different person. Your version yeah. of what you're seeing and then continuing on with your version. Is that what? Yeah, like, yeah, it's like draw this in your style, but not a known character and not all at once it has to go one at a time it has to get filtered through one until until at the until at the end it's a smiley (laughs) it it just it just (laughs) or like like it it just it just becomes i actually becomes so low if i got like the drawing from shannon and it's like you know madonna and child but they're raccoons No, I'm for and I'm forbidden from from cheating and making people. <laughs> it's like, oh, what am I going to do with this raccoon? You it do so well. Oh, and you catch expressions as a raccoon. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, they're they're really good raccoon um, portraits. That's, that's, that's so good. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, we had some real. We had some awful raccoons, terrorizing raccoons last night. They Stole your avocado! So I saw. My God. He stole Cheeky. my avocado. He took it out of the bag. He washed my avocado in the bag. <laughs> it was like, oh, ripped it in half. And, okay, Zan says, too slow to mail the originals. Let's do a version, then the next person draws their version of that, but digital, so okay. we can do it in a shorter time. Yeah, then it could go. Oh, that's a good... Then there could be a few versions done in a day if people are really excited. All right, well, that uses yeah. technology. And, um, and, that, yeah, and then but... we can somehow, I don't know if it will ever end. But it could that could be like a growing. The one who does nominates a specific person, mm-hmm. maybe. That's a good idea. Maybe I don't know. I'm not sure. There's some good variations to this. I mean, I I like the idea of like getting mail, but mailing all over the world is a pain in the butt. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and I don't know. It is. I just, I just, I mean, I love it, but I just shipped a painting and I was like, ah, I hate mailing. (laughs) So. Yeah, I don't like mailing. And I don't like opening mail either. Um, (laughs) Thank you for the mail that I've been, I I love love getting (laughs) art. Um, When you know it's a painting or you know it's a drawing, it's like Christmas. I love when something in the. Yeah, I do love that. I've got some beautiful art, so that but it's challenging for me, and it's also like um, a part of the getting rid of yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Like, but these things that I cherish, like, I'm not gonna get rid of. No, the that's a, that um, I've been that's seeing. a category of like nothing touches it. Like, I got some art that I like love. Yeah, I have some stickers from Mafalda. I'm gonna get rid of. Yeah, them. cool. <laughs> Mafalda sent me some stickers. Yeah, a little stickers different. are fun. That's like ready-made. They, they want to be stickered <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, I got some of those too. Super cool. Oh, yes, and expensive. Okay, so digital and... But I want it, I want it to get filtered through individuals. I don't want it to... No, be no, like so, so it goes from person to like person. Like so it will still have that kind of um, like chain letter thing. So I, I will... Yes. I'll send it to you, Shannon. Yeah. And then, do you want to draw it okay. to Rosalind, or, or we can just right. kind of yes. figure out, or we can get a few. Absolutely. Rosalind has yeah, to exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you're getting it next, or you can do. Dylan's so you can yeah, raise. I totally. Raise your hands in the chat, and um. Or if we both. And we'll make it, and and people who are into yeah, a so physical that's... thing, then we can work something out as well. But let's let's get it rolling digitally, and then um and then we can still trade art. That'll be fun. All right. Let's iron out all the details in the drawn together chat yeah. after this. We'll, we'll get it pinned down to all the Amazing. best practices. It's a super cool idea. I think we need to do that. Awesome. Yay. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm like pointing to my hand like that. I love it. That's yeah. so cool. <laughs> I wanted to put the. There is a there's a set or what's the set next door? I couldn't find the reference. His. But I oh have my to god! Write. I'll just hear off the. Oh, it was just I'm. Here, Rosalind. It was in um, Nice, Nice, France. I was. And I'm just such. It's like you. I'm a twelve year old boy. It's like you know, you have to. <laughs> I can't. I can't walk by without going. Hey. Uh-huh. I'll just bring the um the reference up again so people can can see in case you didn't see it in the beginning. <laughs> Um, I know. Here we go. It, like, it could just be this random. Let's just yeah. We could just say that. I don't know what we say on YouTube. I'm like, just say that, and they'll think I'm like this lady of the night of art <laughs> world. I guess. I think we're hey. <laughs> we are so far into the live stream that um, we can say whatever we want. It's all right. <laughs> Apparently, it's just the opening few minutes that kind of. Um, I'll have to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But my, I love you drew my hand. I love it. It's such a, it's such a, I love my hands because they do so much for me, but they are, I never think they're the prettiest part of me. And so that year that I, I took that picture and I thought this is my self portrait for the year is that hand. I, it was like, for me, it was kind of brave, it's not a big deal to other people, but I, I just never thought my hands were very pretty. But I love, I love the drawing you did of it. Thank you. Cool. I love that we drew your hand because it, uh, yeah, hand portraits mean a lot to me. Yeah. Sure. They do. My hands are like the most, like, like I, I have my mother's hands and I've always been like bothered by hands and like my mom saying, you have to wear gloves or your hands will look like mine. And I'm like, what's wrong with that? <laughs> and like. My hands do look like hers, and I love hands, and your hand is so beautiful, and I love what hands do, and I, I have the same thing about hands, but not the same but different things. So, they are so individual. I, My kids always say I could always know, like they could see a million pictures, and they said they'd always know my hand, and I'm like, that's super sweet, or I'm really like, I don't know, it's like my hands are so, because to me I'm like, oh, they're so unattractive, but but the, I love them because of what they do. And I love them because my kids love them. They, they think my hands are pretty. And so, and my son, I wonder, like, he's got my hands. 
Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I bet my son would be on my hand. No? It's just, yeah, they're distinctive. Mm. It's a little. I love my hand. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing a, a hand my son made portrait with us. This from my hand. It's, it's cool because it was some. Um, a hand portrait. Yeah, nice. Yeah, the, the first hand portrait we've done in these sessions. And it's such a beautiful drawing. I've Oh, I'm amazed. Yeah, I can't wait to see how everybody feels yeah. with their hands. Um, share your it's amazing. work with the hashtag drawn together and you can tag each of us. Yeah. And um, all of our Instagram links. I hope it was a good challenge. In the description below. It is. I'm going to do it. I'm going to paint it tonight. I'm inspired. Cool. Try. Yeah, it's yeah. been. I don't know. I say that like nightmare it's been uh it's been really cool um <laughs> drawing you and just hanging out chatting it was um the best thing thank to do you. today right now thank you for sharing so much inspiration it's uh it's really so, so super inspiring actually like and i'm so glad we're doing this together this the thing that you remember dylan and i want to do uh I gotta choose a master yeah. study to do. Well, I'm gonna do this project first, and then I'll still I'll be I'll you know, that idea. master studies. Honestly, I don't think they're a necessity, but I will say if you ever feel like you don't have inspiration and you feel like you're stuck and you don't know what to do, that's when a master study I think comes in very helpful. Is like they can always say something if you feel like you've run out of things to say, and I think that on the on the ex in the experience of doing that master study, the end result will always be that you learn something. But it's it's not necessary. I really they're not the oh it's the best way to learn or anything. I just feel like if you ever feel stuck, they're a great solution. So. And it's so great because you do music, and that's how we learn music is by covering other yeah, songs. Yeah, that's, that's how so my brain kind of connected it after so many times of. It, it was a it was a type of repetition that helped me learn. It, to me, that that equaled nice. you know learning something was repetition. So I, yeah. I'm a big believer. Yeah, when I um years ago when I did some master studies and the the process of choosing something to study and to be like, why do I like this painting so much? Or what is it about this that's yeah. like? There's there's something special about it that's kind of like and yeah what is it's, it what is it and then by doing the study you begin to understand like oh it's like this interaction between whatever it is um, like yeah. just gaining that into understanding into the image and what makes it like powerful and why did it kind of resonate with you and that's such an interesting process of like having that I do. Thing that you can see the same struggles like in in the in the composition or the execution sometimes you recognize oh they had to have really struggled to solve this and so you kind of feel like a joint effort with them like you're like you're with them a little bit there is a sense that it's personal and and if you ever think oh I'll do it at a later date if you're at a museum um, and, and you're asking about the postcards I buy, I'll buy 10 or 20 postcards just to have in my bag oh, and carry cool. around. So if, if like, and I'll, tr I'll paint other things and I'll paint, <clears throat> you know, whatever I'm seeing or the place or the neighborhood. But if I feel like I'm stuck or something, I can pull out those postcards and have a master study with me while I'm traveling. It's a pretty, it's a pretty convenient way to always um not have a book you know we all have i have favorite art books and everything but i don't get to carry them around with me right now mm -hmm. so um yeah definitely a pro tip grab um a handful of postcards and i would suggest not just the ones you love try to put two or three of, of ones that you think could teach you something or maybe even don't even like it you're just gonna go for the challenge of doing something you don't like mm -hmm. and I, I i'll do that sometimes i'll pick you know, a painting that I'm just like, boy, that painting challenged me. I didn't really, you know, feel it or something, but I'll try it anyway. So that's that, Vermeer. Vermeer for me. I don't like him. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's... Him, he and I, we have a history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
yeah that's but, uh, such an interesting idea because yeah. sometimes there are these like celebrated masters and stuff I'm kind of like okay whatever yeah <laughs> uh, oh. put your least favorite artist in the chat yeah <laughs> your, your, your least yeah. favorite master <laughs> it would you know what i'm gonna name names don't be mad but renoir i'm not a fan oh my god what why <laughs> why <Renoir>. what the <laughs> makes so many mistakes <laughs> oh. It, oh you know, gosh, there's a oh, there's like a parody account about right. that. Yeah. <laughs> no. For me, it's Van Gogh. Why do we celebrate Vincent Van Gogh? What? Why? I, I don't understand it. I have a fun. Oh, I'll tell you somebody. Okay, explain that to me. Um, Edward Monk. I I always kind of thought, hmm, like the screen. Mm -hmm. But I'll it's tell insane. you what. Going through his museum. I'm a fan. I'm now, I consider myself like his number one fan. I love him. Yeah, you're converted. That's so interesting because didn't I see, I, I, I'm asking you, I remember seeing something, I was like, that's Edward Monk, like that doesn't oh. look like the screen. Love all. him. It was, it was like a realistic kind of lighty thing. I can't remember what it was. What about you, Dylan? Who do you Who name? Yeah. Who do I hate? Spill it, Dylan. Tell the truth. Hmm. We're gonna know. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, he's gonna, he's gonna win. Right no, no, I'm not. I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna. It's, it's gonna be big. Um, <laughs> at, at, well, I can also, yeah, Caravaggio. I was like, you know, everyone raves about it, and I'm kind of like, what, why? What, what's the deal? And um, yeah, and it's like, yeah, yeah, okay. And um, <laughs> and I, we were looking at some in Antwerp when I met and we went with like a, a bunch of artists and we're looking at it and stuff and I've seen a lot of it and like yeah okay okay, okay. um and and there were some other people who I admire and I don't know if you've ever watched this but I know who you are and this person was like oh this is this is why I'm here this is my favorite thing and I'm like really yeah that thing <laughs> um but then so but we're thinking about um Adam Paquette explained to us this thing about the the highlight being God and and it was such a revolutionary thing at the time and since then I've also heard about Caravaggio like a, a pretty wild character in life yes. um but there was this yeah so, so that was my, my thing I was like oh okay like all right um but then, but then understanding this and this is so interesting like with art history and I think it's um like studying all these masters and because I, I just basically paint what I see and there's some okay um but having some kind of historical context of things can be really enlightening and interesting. And this thing about how at one point it was like the vanishing point, like so, so much art that was done in Europe was um, for the church and the vanishing point was God. And um, um, yeah, Adam Paquette told us this story that there was this one artist who presented some work with a mirror and the vanishing point was a hole and you would look through and then you would see the painting and realize that it was you yes perceiving it and that you are god and yeah. how it was kind of like a heretical but like groundbreaking amazing thing and that that um that when caravaggio kind of i don't i don't know i wasn't there but um but when that thing the, the highlight and chiaroscuro was developed and it was instead of being about perspective which was a real kind of like so, such a shift in awareness um, to be able to draw and paint in that way. Um, but then it was about that relationship of light and the, um, and that maybe it's just the highlight on the shoulder, which is like that, that light, that is God. And that is what you're connecting to. That's what's being transmitted through this dark field of someone just standing there, whatever so it is. And, so when you were thinking about that, did you have more of an appreciation for Caravaggio? Yeah, totally, totally. Like having that kind of historical context. There have been quite a few kind of things where, I don't know, different phases where I'm kind of like, oh, really? Like when, when someone, because I, I, I haven't really, I didn't go to art school and haven't done art history and stuff. And, and a lot of it early, early days kind of came through my dad, like what dad liked. It was like, mm -hmm. that was what I was exposed to. So like Turner and Rembrandt. And um, I like a few select artists that he really admired. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I didn't have, I, like sometimes when I hear Nicolas Uribe talking about art and he's like so knowledgeable and- Oh, he's, a, and he's an encyclopedia, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, who are, who are, who are these people? What's, what's being spoken about? 
and but then to to hear that kind of um the historical context of things can be like oh wow like there's just a really different kind of awareness um that kind of starts to actual in-person experience will change um your perspective i mean Mm -hmm. is a a picture is is um that copy can only give you so much information because it's out right it's flattened out and so it's not actually and, and you know how accurate are we getting with with colors and, and whatnot i mean we're getting pretty good actually but but we've just had pictures in a book and and now we're getting you know better resolution on our devices but in person it is um it's like apples and oranges i mean it is that different of an experience and so i've had i have had my opinion changed by seeing an actual work versus knowing the work and, and and being familiar with it and then seeing it in person and having having that shift in me i have had my my you know it's to me it feels weird because it's like having a an opinion changed mm-hmm. um just by the fact of getting to see the actuality of what that artist intended he intended it to be viewed he he didn't in a lot of instances they weren't intending to have it you know, reproduce the way we have it and seen on device. And, and so it was intended to be viewed this way. And then when you're there, that light bulb goes off and you go, oh, I, I get why. I mean, every decision makes sense why, you know, it was done in the way, um, the manner, the choices, you know, just by getting to see it in person. And I think um, we're fortunate if we get to see things in person. I mean, is it is it a necessity? I mean, to love art, no, not at all. Mm. But it's a, joy. I think it's such a joy and such a privilege that we have museums and we're able to have that kind of access. And I hope we always get that kind of access because you know I mean I'm worried every time I read a, an article that somebody you know puts soup on another painting or something. <laughs> because I mean I always love the causes, but I'm always like, oh you guys, you know, let's keep our <laughs> let's keep our access. Like it's... you know, right now you can. And en- enjoy something, but I'm like, I hope we always get to enjoy it because it's truly, um, it can be life changing for for some artist in their journey. Yeah. To, to see it that way. Yeah. And that's so much like traveling because like we only see each other on screens and like we don't we get like these ideas about people like I've got these ideas about Renoir but like I haven't actually ever seen one maybe I'll be truly transported no <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it is like that no, like, no. because like you travel to a thing like you see the decisions people make like you see the like you know you you hear about people in Florida but people in Florida are so friendly they're not crazy alligator wrestlers like, but you go there, like, if you go to the place and your ideas are, like, yeah. made uh, into just that. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's totally happened with, I mean, I, we're talking art, but that's also happened to me um, with different countries I've been to and different cultures where I've really um, had a preconceived idea and then I'm totally like, wow, you know, that was something I probably read in a book or grew up with mm-hmm. hearing or something and, and it's totally different like you know I the most common question weirdly is people will always ask me like oh are people really rude in France I'm like really seriously I'm like no <laughs> I'm like no they're not it's like that's a weird that's a weird thing I think it's weird that you're asking that <laughs> <laughs> I'm like it's <laughs> I want to start that rumor about Indiana. People are. Yeah. <laughs> I I people said, I'm like, are really I'm sure there are Indiana. rude people there, but like the country, I'm like, it's just right there. I'm like, that tells me you haven't been there. I'm like, it's one of my favorite places to go. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm like, no, it's like the best place. They're the best people. Are my you, gosh. Yes, all the friendly people in Indiana need to come yell at me and tell me how awful I am now. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll be I like, mean, and then you'll you get to meet a bunch of friendly people. Yelling at you. <laughs> <laughs> no, watch. The next time I go, I'm going to have like some French person trip me and I'll be like, the French. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a gross generalization. You French people. And it's the one, one person <laughs> who accidentally. That is exactly what it is. It's generalization. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, 
I, I find everyone's lovely everywhere. I have I have yet to I have yet to be someplace when we've left that I'm like not going back there. I mean like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that hasn't happened. Yeah. That's pretty easy. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for having me, you guys. I could talk forever yeah. with you guys. You're fun. Yeah, yeah, we can do it again sometime. We, we've gotten into the depths of my uh, what do you call it? We're, na we're naming our um, like of Renoir to say we're best yeah. we're best friends now. So. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> dope, dope. I love it. And and I totally I get Dylan's Caravaggio because that makes total sense. He's so stark, and then you do understand everything, and you kind of go, "Oh, he's brilliant." Yeah. So. <laughs> we have to look for the deeper message. We have to take a page out of Dylan's book, yeah. always, <laughs> and say, "Why do we not like this? It's clearly reflecting something on a bigger, uh, a deeper." Something broken within. Yeah. yeah, we have to like repair this. I I actually this, this warped funhouse. I hated tomatoes growing up. Cells. Really? I, I hated tomatoes. I uh, I just thought they were the most deceptive, untruthful, unkind thing to <laughs> eat. I and, mean, they are. And then you met a tomato. No, no. I made I made a conscious choice. I challenged myself. Um, they draw you in. Yeah, they draw you in, and they look so. They look so firm and they're full of slime. And you're like, oh, um, oh, it was, it was the worst. Little but it was actually when I, I was um, when I was traveling and I, I went to Greece. And for some reason, I was like, if I'm in Greece, I need to eat tomatoes. Whatever yeah. reason. And um, and then I just started eating them. And I was like, oh, tomatoes are so good. And um, that that was the thing the where, where I, I just I had, I had a moment where I was like, I think that maybe there's something I'm not getting um, and it's I need a, to it's a real thing what you're describing it's called being so hungry that <laughs> oh, yeah. is going to taste amazing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's for real yeah um, oh, tomatoes are good I'm glad you like them now <laughs> so am I and I'm just like when my kids aren't liking food and I'm just like it's actually so good and I would never offer you something that's not good. <laughs> and then I've got these kids like, I don't want that. I don't want that. It's like, hopefully one day you'll come around. That is a good way to put it. I'm going to use that next time I have like a little grandchild or something be like, mm, I'll be like, would I offer you something? Your favorite grandmother? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother said that grandmothers are always right. Always. Always. They and then I would get home and my mom would say, that was actually a very cruel thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't know who to believe. It's so true. I have no doubt I'm being corrected daily. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I like the, you know, we'll just go with the narcissistic belief. But I never like hearing that I'm right from my son. I <laughs> Well, I'm very surprised when I'm right, so it's this constant surprise. So, huh. right. Well, um, it happens. Some, it's you know, sometimes it's nice, sometimes it's it's yeah, sometimes it's not. <laughs> well, let's do this again sometime. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Okay. It was super, super, super fun. Thank you, Thank so you for joining much. us. Thank you to everyone who's still here. Thank you for making it to the end. That's amazing. And thank you to everyone who joined. So many are here. Thank you. And, um, thank, you. thank you to anyone who comes and watches this after the live. And um, thank you, Charlotta. I look forward to seeing your um, your Rosalind. And um, yes. yeah, as I mentioned, everyone, if you're posting online, use the hashtag drawn together and you can tag us. And um, Thank you, everyone. You're amazing. Thank you for being here, especially Rosalind. Oh, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Cool. <laughs> there, I made it. I made it. Ah, I just put the X <laughs> in. <laughs> I, it could see you. I can was standing next to me, and I was like, "Do I do I write sex in here?" I was like, "I'm just gonna put the X in." <laughs> Perfect. Cool. It's Thanks, like, everyone. Yeah, that's gonna be the that's the headline we need for the. Yeah. <laughs> Sex, rock, and roll. Okay. There you go.